for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tom Blackman. I'm a performance nutritionist. I specialise, though, in teaching people how to live a leaner lifestyle and so become a leaner, per leaner person or leaner people. I also, in a previous life, was a bodybuilder and I own a gym in Bristol called the Ministry of Fitness, which is the largest gym in the Southwest UK, independent gym. Um, quite successful, been going 10 years. Um, and I did that for a little while. I did competition bodybuilding for a little while. Was sort of quite good at that. And then I decided I wanted to do, uh, well, work with people for nutrition and improve their lives. So I did a, a sports diploma. It was a postgraduate diploma in applied sports and exercise uh, nutrition, I think it was, it's a long title. I got a distinction because I'm a bit of a geek. And then I moved into doing performance coaching for athletes. So I worked with people in boxing, bodybuilding, uh, mixed martial arts, um, and some other stuff. And they all got really good results. And they all got better results than what they did before, which is great. And then they, um, but I, I decided that it wasn't really that fulfilling for me. Although, yes, these people are going and winning stuff and, and you know, doing really well, I didn't feel fulfilled because they were just normal people or athletic people who were getting the results they wanted. And after they finished, it was like, well, I'll do another competition. It didn't really make a difference to their life and didn't make a difference to my life. So I moved into coaching weight loss as a prim primary thing. And specifically people who wanted to lose 20 kilos of body fat or more. So I do work with people who, 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 um, who want to lose less, but generally it's 20 kilos or more. So I do this in one-to-one -one coaching, and I've also got a program called Target Lean, which I pretty much ripped off Sook's title and then just put Target in the front of it. So, um, but I did tell him, so that's okay. And, and these are the people I've obviously worked with. On the left-hand side there, I've got the laser to work. Um, these are the people here I worked with for uh, performance stuff and so a few competitions there. This is a guy from my gym, massive transformation there. Um, lady here who has... Uh, certain medical issues which I can't discuss but um, had real issues losing weight before with other coaches and um, she's more muscled now and you know looks better and everything else and these are the target lean programs so I don't do before and after pictures because people don't really want to put before pictures up when they're looking quite big and I don't think the the the, the program is designed for the before and after it's they've lost an amount of weight but target lean is a lifestyle it's not lose the amount of weight in six weeks. It's live a leaner lifestyle for life. So that's what I teach now. Okay, but why am I here? Because I'm also good at doing content. And if you've ever seen any of my videos, but the early ones are pretty shit, but now they're actually quite good, sort of. And I've done all these different memes and everything else. Uh, and today I'm gonna teach you how I do my stuff because I'm quite busy. I have a family and a young son. I have a business in the gym, which is quite busy, and I also have the nutrition stuff, which is quite busy. And then all the stuff I do in my private life, which actually isn't a lot anymore. So I lead to, I lead, yeah, all the, all, all the dads are like, no, no, no. So, um, <laughs> so I'm gonna teach you how I do my content quickly. And I use a couple of apps to do this. I don't, although I have Photoshop and all that sort of stuff, I don't do a lot of stuff on Photoshop. I do stuff on stuff on my phone, and I do it on the, on the go if I'm waiting for like, the school to finish or whatever. So <clears throat> I think that's a repeat slide which shouldn't be in there. So let's, do, let's go on to that one. So the outline of today's talk is we're gonna go through the problems associated with content creation, what are cope strategies, because the title is cope, how to create content quickly that speaks to your audience, because if you've seen FitPro land, it's full of infographics and stuff like that, which doesn't really speak to anybody. What media to use, how to multi-purpose content for lead generation and list building, which obviously Stephen and you know, Lawrence is going to talk more about Facebook ads and stuff later on. A few memes that I've done. And I've got some on-the-spot activities. So anybody who's on their phone later is going to get zapped with the laser. And then you're going to answer some questions. And I've got a few cookies here for right, right answers. So get engaged. <laughs> Uh, and there's a load of like pretentious blurb about what you'll be able to do at the end. You're basically good at doing memes and stuff. Okay, right. So the problem, so the industry saturated with fit pros all saying the same stuff. So I, probably someone in this room, lots of people in this room, have done a yogurt swap infographic or something like that. Now that's standard. We all do that sort of stuff. But and I'm, hopefully this is going to be the right answer. Has anybody ever come to you saying? 
I saw your yogurt swap infographic and I want to work with you. <laughs> okay, good. So that's, uh, that's good. I, I was hoping some, no one would go, yeah, me. Right, so having to create content each week, that is an issue because we're all busy. You know, we've all got lives. We've all got, well, some of us have got kids. Some of us have got to actually work with clients. We can't just be on our phone all day. So we don't have a lot of time to create content. So we need to do that fast. There's multiple platforms to post on. You know, we could go around the room, there's probably 20 platforms we could post on each day. How do we do that? We're a limited, limited time because we're, most of us are one-man bands. It was covered earlier. Like, Suk's obviously got a really big business with loads of people on his team, Stephen and Suk, and, um, but he's got people to help him with that. Most of us are one-man bands. And I am still essentially a one-man band, even though I've got staff and stuff like that. In nutrition, I'm a one-man band. And there's multiple media options. So we can do video, infographics, email, articles, stories, blah, 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 podcasts. So what do we do? How do we, how do, we do all this and still generate clients? So we need to find a way of creating content quickly from start to finish that can be quickly repurposed across multiple platforms and media types. God, that sounds so inspirational, doesn't it? So, and I'm hoping the click's going to work because I'm on, I'm on the, uh, the, the uh, not on PowerPoint. So, cope strategies, create once, post everywhere. Now, um, a couple of trainings ago, Stephen talked about cope strategies, and there was sort of an old way of doing it, which you have, a, you'd have a long video or webcast or something else, and then that would then translate into little snippets. So, you would take like 15 second bits and put it into your stories, or one minute bits and put it onto your. Uh, Instagram and I've done this with a, a really long advert I had professionally done I just put little snippets into my adverts and stories and stuff podcast so you would take the the video and record the sound and put it into a podcast maybe some of the stuff you then put into an email Facebook post Instagram and then maybe a little quote on Twitter so you would take the, the one video and then make it all into all into these things but a new I suppose way of doing it you start with an idea and it goes down to all these things in different ways all in once. So it does, doesn't start just with a video, it can start with anything and then go out to all the other things. Okay, so first question for a cookie. Why, why are 7, 11 and 4, no, no. Ah. <laughs> you had your cookies. So they've had their cookies, they're not allowed to answer. Why is 7, 11, 4 an important number or group of numbers? Yes. <laughs> Give that guy. I won't throw it because I'm rubbish at throwing. Oh, <laughs> Give that guy a cookie. <laughs> no one else clapped them. <laughs> <laughs> so, seven eleven fouring is is the sort of the secret formula that Google and marketing people use to to determine how they're going to sell to people. Now, have you ever seen how Japanese people do business? Businessmen, they go on a golf course, don't they, for about six or seven hours, and then they decide if they're going to do business with that person or not. It's seven hours of content, 11 touch points, four channels. So seven hours of content is them digesting your content for seven hours. It could be a podcast, a video, looking at your Instagram, whatever, stories, whatever. If you can get seven hours of content with someone and they watch seven hours of content, they're much more likely to buy from you. Because if I just uh, want to, hey, do you want my thing? It's good. No? no? Okay, yeah, sound like but I just said yeah. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. But I've known Stephen for a long while, so if I know he wants something, he goes, "You want that?" I'll be more you. inclined to buy from me because I've known him for a little while, a couple of years, I think. So you want to build up that rapport. Obviously, everyone gets that. Eleven touch points. Now, this is the time they touch your business. So this can be, it can be eleven touch points on the same thing. It could be eleven podcasts to digest, eleven videos that they watch. But 11 touch points, because they want to be confirmed that you're the right person to buy off. Right? You don't, I mean, some of us have gone on Instagram, oh, look at that spring thing that walks down the stairs, I'll buy that, it's 2 99 But if you're going to invest in someone for your health, you, you really want to know that they're the people to buy off and be confirmed that they're the people to buy off. And then four channels. So generally, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter sometimes, YouTube. Four channels which they can consume your content on. And this is really important where you've got to have all these things in place. I mean, obviously there are people who just make money off Instagram or whatever, but generally you want to have all these things in place. So seven hours of content they can digest, 
11 touch points they can make with you, four channels. Okay. So what media types are there? Oh, that's not come out too well. So we've got YouTube, Instagram, IGTV, and they've all got their different squares, wide or whatever, portrait. So we've got to create that, those sorts of things. Types of video, so you can have under 60 seconds, 60 seconds of three minutes or over three minutes. Now, I read an interesting thing the other day that it used to be under 60 seconds was the sort of the magic thing on an engagement. And actually, apparently now, over three minutes is sort of considered the best sort of engagement. Is, would that be right? I'm pretty sure. It depends on where they are in the funnel, but yeah. more so people are using longer, longer stuff to get further buying to, yeah. to sell stuff. So yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, so, um, so I, I've, done, I've done both these, under 60 <laughs> seconds and the over three minutes. And recently, my over three minute ones have been getting a bit more engagement, but that's maybe because you know, they want to listen to what I've got to say for longer. And then you've got types of videos. So you can do educational, funny, or total shit videos, which no one watches. And we've all seen those. A guy like, could you like to know about calorie deficit? It's um, just, please, please buy my thing. Who watches those videos? Crap, don't do those videos. If, if, you, if you're bad on camera, get good and then record properly. Record yourself doing it. Play it back to someone. If they say, oh, you know, it needs a bit of improvement, do that. Educational or funny. So you want to be 80-20, so 80% educational 20% funny or the other way around it never really works doing half and half so a little bit of a joke at the end of an educational talk is okay or a little bit of education at a funny talk exactly etc etc but these are all the things that we can do and that's just video okay what about static images so we've got personal photos like selfies professionals by a professional photographer like we've got here today just text so text on a like Sook was talking about the advert earlier with the, just the text on Photo and text combined, so that's a meme, isn't it? And infographics, that's your yogurt swaps. Slide deck, a slide deck's like a PowerPoint presentation which people use to pitch for in, in business. And then client data chart, so it's like, look how much weight my clients lost over the course of whatever. Then we have articles, so just text article, photo text, PDF, blah, 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 blah. blah. All these things your clients can consume about you, and, and you've got to do a fair bit of these. And then what platforms are we going to go on? All these things here, TikTok, if you're 12, if anyone do, deals with 12-year-olds. 12, 12 I know Jamie Alderton's on big on TikTok at the moment. Gary um, uh, Beeson is where you should be, so. You know what, we've mm. got one student who's killing it in terms of engagement with views, mm. but it's very hard to monetize. Yeah, the, I've got a TikTok video, which is basically, I repurposed a, a commando clip from when he's on the beach with me buying a, 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 um, a vacuum cleaner, and it's got like a, ridiculous amount of views but no one's bought anything from me yet so um so all these things you can do i'm on kajabi and as so the ofb is on kajabi you can have like blogs and stuff on there you can have blogs all these places and then you've got to also send that to email and send your so if people come to email to get into your email list and then email send them back to your social media so they can see the stuff you've done so wow that's a lot of stuff to do and you're only one person so how are we going to make these, uh, these things up? So this is one I did, and I, I did this in literally two minutes, and you can probably tell, because I didn't spend much time on the text. I just pulled these three images off the internet, and I made a, an informative, I suppose, jokey meme about people with nutrition knowledge not giving um, the, 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 the right information. I use Spark Post, which is basically just like a, a Canva type thing. It's, you, you can make up your... Um, uh, like your tiles like this on it quite easily. Canva's good as well. These are just the ones I use. Video Leap, I use for all my video stuff. It's um, unfortunately only on iOS, but it's really, really good. Um, I use Adobe PDF Maker to make um, lead magnets and stuff. Cut Story, sometimes to clip things into shorter videos. And every now and again, I use a Thug Life app, but that's generally with videos of me and Jake and my son <laughs> when he's like stealing an apple off me or something. Um, but Thug Life, everybody knows what Thug Life is. You know, does anybody really know, not, not know what Thug Life is? Uh, Google Thug Life on YouTube and you'll see some awesome videos. <laughs> so, um, so those are things I use. It's very basic. All this stuff can be done on my phone, on the go. Now, here's the thing, and this is a quote from um, Daniel Priestley. Prolific beats perfect. So you'll spend loads of time going on your thing, trying to get that last little thing right, and, oh, this looks, move it around, everyone else. We're all guilty of that. 
just get it out there. If it's 80% good, just, just get it out there and make three times as many videos. Don't think about, oh, this bit of text needs to be there, that needs to, because actually when it gets out to your audience, they might, not, they might not think it's any good anyway and you've wasted two or three hours. Mm -hmm. So get something which says your message, get out there and, and make sure it's just good enough to, um, to, 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 get the, to get the message across. Okay, so how do we create original content? Now we obviously, infographics, stuff like that, they all have their place, but we want to create original content so that people identify with us, not just an infographic. So you can be about your perfect client, about you, and about current news. Now mostly you want it to be about this, because they're the people that you are, you're going to uh, sell to and are going to buy from and put money in your pocket. About you is to enhance who you are as a person, as a practitioner. And then current news is just a jump on a bandwagon stuff of, uh, oh, that's in the news, so I can create some content about it if we're stuck. So those are three things that you want to be thinking of. Okay, so about the perfect client. So you should always talk to your perfect client. If, you, if you're looking to make money and looking to get people to buy from you, always talk to your perfect client, what their interests are. And obviously talked earlier about, and I think uh, Steve done about the audience and how, what, they're what they're interested in, what sort of magazines they, reach, uh, they, they read, what do they do with their social life, what do they drink, I think that came up with um, the, the, other, the other talk. I wouldn't waste time on stuff your client isn't interested in. So I very rarely post stuff about fasted cardio, because none of my, unless it's to say it's shit, but because none of my clients are interested in it, they wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't identify with me if I started going, fasted cardio is the best thing. They'll break rapport with them, they can't relate to you, and they'll probably lose interest in your post if you do it too often. So if you're always talking about something your, your clients aren't interested in, they'll just go, oh, it's that guy again, just, just swipe her. You've got to break that rapport coming through, and I know we talked about that with the, the colours earlier on, on, the, uh, on the advert. But unless it's a topic that defines you as a person, so we've all got stuff that defines us. So I have my son, I go out for a Tuesday walk with him. Now it's Friday because I'm on Fridays. And we go for a walk, we have a coffee and a cake and everything else. And I always post about that on my stories because that's what defines me as a person. I'm a dad, I have a normal life, which my clients, they're, they're dads, mums, whatever, they have normal lives. They go out for a coffee shop, they go walking, they can identify with that. But I very rarely would post stuff like, say when I used to be a bodybuilder and do, and do like all my hardcore lifting workouts, I don't really post that stuff anymore. Occasionally I'll post a workout video for the gym or whatever, but that doesn't appear on my main feed because my clients aren't really interested in that anymore. And if you have two or three personal things that you always post about, so me, me and Jacob, my gym, whatever, so post about his dog, kids, everyone posts about kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve posts about his kids, yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. So, um, yeah, so, uh, but then they, they, they can know it, oh, they're posting about that thing again and they can identify with you. So this is a client I had, this is just a recent one I did. So this is identifying with the holiday thing. So they, he started here at 140, come down, and he had a holiday here where he literally smashed the all-you-can-eat buffet. And that's in his own words. He went to Barbados for two weeks. We had a discussion. He said, oh, I'm not, I don't really want to diet when I'm over there. I said, well, just don't then. Just eat as much as you can, and we'll assess the damage when you come back. So he did eat as much as he could. <laughs> and that's, see, that's just topped off the, the graph there, off the scale. So, um, but see, the spike in his weight is small. So the message here, with this is specific client here. This is my client base. 32-year-old yeah. males. They've got an active social life. They want to eat food that they like. They, he improved his habits and routines. And here's the main thing. He had a two-week all-you-can-eat holiday with minimal rebound. That's the message there. You can go on a diet. You can eat what you want. Come back. And because you got into your routine again, and now he's actually below the weight he started with. So his starting weight was 142. He wants to be 100. So we're over halfway there now. And he's actually got a bet with someone for a grand. He's going to do it by Christmas. So that's what we're working towards. So this speaks directly to my client. But it also says about you can have a social life and everything else, which is people like that. Right, so pen and paper out, content table. What we're going to do, four columns, and this is going to help you create your content. So we're going to create some content ideas right now. Four columns, things the client thinks, and don't write just yet, I'm going to tell you what to write. Things the client thinks, mistakes that they make because of what they think, why it's a mistake, 
what's the solution? Okay, so things the client thinks, I'll give you one example, that diets have to be restrictive. Mistakes they make, they go on restrictive diets. Why it's a mistake, because they rebound and get loads of, get loads of weight back again. What's the solution? You can tell them about a diet where you don't have to eat restrictive food and you can even sell in your product there. But the idea is you want to th get into their mind. So why, what they think, mistakes that they make because of that thing, why it's a mistake and what's the solution. Just a couple of minutes, just get a few things down and we'll, we'll get some ideas. Because this will help you create the content. And I've done 14 here. I did this in about, I don't know, 20 minutes. So I'm not expecting to get that many. But just, just a few things now, and at least one, if you, can, if you can do at least one. How long two minutes actually was? Jeez. Five minutes. You done it? Excellent. Uh, um, yeah, I just need to figure out the solution. Ah, excellent. Okay. Has has everybody? Sorry. Yeah, but that's too easy. I wanted to be yeah. a bit more subtle in that. <laughs> I'll just do buy my shit if you want to buy it. So. Buy your shit. So yeah. So what they think, mistakes that they make because of that thought, that belief, why it's a mistake. So why shouldn't they do that mistake? What's the solution? So and this doesn't have to be you know, let's like see, said, buy my product, because you want them to do that, but you want to suggest to them things that they can do, which, um, so which you can do for them better. So you, you can, I can say to someone, go on a diet where you eat only foods you want, and, and you, won't, you won't ever go off your diet, and they go, that's great, how do I do that? Well, <laughs> I've got a product that can do that. So yes, yeah, so you often want to offer the solution, so that, and, and this can become your content. So has someone, ever, everybody got one thing written down, one line written down? One idea, yeah. Anyone need more time? Okay, cool. So here's what I created after about, I think, one coffee in 20 minutes. So humans don't like prisons, exactly. Yeah. So where's it? So diets are restrictive. Mistakes that they make, they go on. You go on a restrictive diet. Why it's a mistake? Humans don't like prisons, as in a prison of a diet. Now my big thing is talking about. I have three sort of um, core issues why people can't lose weight. So it's confusion, the prison frustration. Confusion is they don't know about nutrition. Prison is they've gone to prison of a diet. Frustration, they come off the diet and they're very frustrated and it's a repeating circle. And then I've got the three solutions. Anyway, go up. If we've got time, I'll go into that later. So yeah, so they, go, they don't like prisons and then what they want, a diet that incorporates all their favorite foods. Okay, and then other ones, eating lots of fat burns, body fat. They do keto. <clears throat> Keto breath, everyone hates you because you're a ketard. <laughs> Educate on how fat burning is based on calories. So you don't have to do keto. This is loads of, loads of different things here. Now, I've built some of these out of stuff I already do, so I can show you how to build content later on. Okay, so next, and, and all these slides will be available afterwards, so you don't have to like, take photos or write all those things down. Right, okay, next cookie challenge. What have all these people got in common? They might have a lot of things, but bear in mind we're thinking about content and promoting your content. What have all these people got in common? Persuasive. Sorry? Persuasive, Persuasive yeah? Price You've had a cookie. <laughs> Did anyone hear that? You've not had a cookie? You can have a cookie. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? Right, so all these people, you know what they stand for. And why do you know what they stand for? Because they're polarizing and they've, and they've told you exactly what they, what they think of the world. So obviously we all know what he stood for. Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Nigel Farage. Love him or hate him, I just love watching him talk. He's so funny and inspiring. And it's like, if I, I, mean, if I was really into Brexit, then you know, I, I, he would be the person I'd talk to. 
um, Anita Roddick, and then Elon Musk. So despite what, they're, what, ha what you might think of them personally, they've all inspired people to take change because of their beliefs. And they'll polarize people to come work with them if they were nutritionists, because there is clear what they stand for. Okay, so why is that important? Uh, people need to know what you do, what you stand for. So what are the things that you stand for? And there's going to be an exercise on this, so don't worry about writing anything just yet. What do you stand against? Who are the villains that you do battle with? I know Sook's talked about heroes and villains before. And can you rant on 60 seconds for your business? Now, when I say rant, I don't mean go into an effing and blinding session. It's why do you do what you do? And it's not a sales pitch. It's the stuff that defines you as a person. Why do you do weight loss or whatever you do? At the beginning, I told you that I used to work with performance nutrition clients, but now I work with people who want to lose 20 kilos of body fat because that's what inspires me. And I love seeing the change in them. And I love seeing how when I'm talking to them and they say they've lost another two kilos and this lady I worked with the other day, she doesn't now have to take tramadol because she doesn't, she doesn't have that weight on her, so her back and her knees aren't hurting. That's the sort of stuff I get off, get off on. <laughs> Wrong thing, inspires me. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I stand for uh, a certain amount of values, I stand against them, and the villains you do battle with. So what's your rant? How are you gonna identify, how are you gonna be the Gandhi, or not the Hitler, but these people who are positive, how are you going to be those people? And then, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to see people that suddenly want to march across Europe. So it's not a sales pitch. That comes later. It's the stuff that defines you from the heart. Why do you work with the clients you work with? What do you believe in? Why do you do what you do? What do you want to change in the world? So I, I subscribe to the UN 17 Global Goals. And number three and number four is good health and well-being and good education. So that's something I can make a difference with because I'm a nutritionist and I know stuff, geeky stuff about nutrition and I can coach people to have better health and well-being. So that's what I believe in. Okay. Don't get all mushy. Don't cry on camera saying about how you hope to these people. Link it back to your business. So this stuff that you do, this stuff that you drive, drives all this, link it back to your business. So I love seeing the changes in people when they lose 20 kilos, the life-changing things. They can go on a beach and not be uncomfortable about how they look. They love getting into photos. A guy I worked with the other day, the, the graph I showed you earlier, he, he said the reason he changed was because when he was at a Christmas party, he had a, he had a tea towel here behind, behind his shirt in case his shirt burst and he didn't want people to see his stomach. And now that's not going to happen at all because he put the same suit on the other day and it's like here. That's the sort of stuff that I like to work with. And your rant, ooh, your rant defines your content. So you don't want to be just the normal guy who does all the, I do weight loss, I do this, I do that. You want to be, I work with these people, almost niching down into, into certain things. I work with these people because that's that what, I, what I get rewards from. And that's, that's what I specialise in. And, you know, we can all, obviously, if we're all nutrition people, PTs, we can all train most people. We can all do weight loss for most people. But who are the people you really enjoy working with? Because there's billions of people in the world. You don't have to do everybody, do you? You can, you can do a, a niche market. Okay, so, I think we've got enough time. What do you stand for? Now, two to four key principles that you hold, two to four key bugbears that you have. And I'll, I'll show you mine so that you've got a little bit of an idea here. So I believe in education, not dictation. So educating the client to lose weight. I don't like overcomplication of nutrition or misleading information to extract money. You know, or that'd be like, with Sook, it'd be like fit pros with six-figure businesses. You know, that's stuff that really, I know, I can see his face, really annoys him. Choice. I like my clients to have complete choice in what they do. I don't tell them what to do. They choose what they do with my advice. I don't like unnecessary restriction. I like easy to follow systems. I don't like ridiculous complex systems. So a couple of key principles that you hold, just, just write them down, because then this is going to come into your content again when we start to write memes and articles and stuff like that. You want, to, you want people to know what you stand for as a person, because if they stand for those things, 
they'll identify with you more. And you shouldn't worry about polarising people because people like people like themselves. They don't like someone who just tries to please everybody. So just a minute or two, just write down one or two that you've got. <clears throat> okay, has everybody got at least one? The one line, I should say. Anybody need more time? Okay, good. Okay, so all these things are going to come back into the content the minute we start to generate it. Okay, and a little slide on current news content. So there's this thing at the moment where a story will come out, it will get shared, and then every fit pro will jump on it and go, oh, you've seen this, it's disgraceful. And they all just, oh, it's everyone, oh, it's disgraceful, it's disgraceful. Yeah, it is disgraceful that a guy told a fat lady she couldn't come to his... Fit, uh, his boot camp because she was too fat. That's, has everybody seen that story? Yeah, we've all seen it. So if you haven't, that's what happened. So yeah, the, the guy wrote back to her on Messenger and said, you're too fat, you can't come on my program. So obviously every fit pro in the land goes, oh, I would never do that. Come and do my, 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 uh, my boot camp. We all would, wouldn't we? We would never turn someone away because they were too fat. It'd be like a challenge. Or we would refer them on to people who maybe specialise in that area. So don't join in online bullying and sharing the names of people who do stuff. It just brings, it just brings light to their, um, their stupidity and gives them more exposure. Don't jump on a bandwagon. If someone's saying this is terrible, don't just go share and go, oh, this is terrible. What can we learn from the story? So rather than saying, oh, this is terrible, this guy's told this lady she's too fat, you can write an article on it and say that there is a problem in our media that people think they have to do a certain amount of exercise to get lose weight before they can do a certain amount of other exercise. That's not true. You can get lose weight by doing this, this, and this very easily. You can make it into an article, but use that, the thing about the, the guy saying she was too fat as a sort of the trigger. Say, what can we learn from that, about this business? What, what new thing can we learn? And then make it how it relates back to your business. So you can then drop in an article about how you help someone who is overweight, lose weight, that sort of thing. So don't just jump online, it's lazy. I did this one for Love Island. So everyone's talking about Love Island, how shit it was. I didn't even watch Love Island. I, I've got no idea, no idea what, even what it is. But I saw the people about Love Island. I, I knew it was about cheating on your diet. So I made Carb Island on, Snap, on Spark Post. Will you be true to your diet or will you be a dirty, cheating carb slag? <laughs> St starts every Monday because the diet starts Monday. Okay? Yes, well, I did edit out. Oh, that's a, that's a, some fries there, which is not really evident. But yeah, but that incorporates the whole thing about Love Island. Everybody knows what Love Island is. You cheat on your diet. You don't, you know, so it's, it's just another way of getting in. Think outside the box when you're generating content. Diet starts every Monday. Okay, so now we're going to generate some content. We're going to go up that COPE, that COPE framework. So I showed you that, that what I did earlier. And then at the bottom, there was this one. So this is the message what they think, eating little and often is better for fat loss. So that's what people think, isn't it? Eat small meals and you, and you lose weight. So starts with a tweet. So eating little and often is the best way to lose weight, said by people who have the lifestyle to support it. Six meals or three, no difference to fat loss if calories are the same. Educational statement deals with the mistakes, deals with uh, why it's a mistake potentially. What's the solution? There's a solution. Okay, so that's a Twitter post. Took me about, I don't know, 30 seconds to write it. Then I went into my, uh, I snapped it on the, on the phone, went into uh, my photo editor, clipped it down, chucked it into Instagram with a picture. This is actually a meal I had in Greece, which was obviously quite substantial. And um, this, this, this thing, I just cut it and it went into there. So everybody does this, don't they? Well, hopefully everybody does this. It's really easy to repurpose stuff. Got a nice image there, which sends the message. And then here's your... It is your message there. So that comes into a, an a Instagram post with a little bit of copy there. So this is when I was in Greece and I, I just ate, ate less meals but more, but more in the meals. And I related it back to holiday stuff and how you survive on holiday. So there's a couple of other topics I dealt with there. It's not, not just three to six meals. It's 
holiday eating and sensible eating and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. So a few, a few, little, con um, a few little concepts in there. Got a decent amount of likes, to be fair. Um, not that likes mean dollars, but it's always nice to have a pat on the back, isn't it? And then what I did was I create, I took this, this is a, an idea, and I repurposed it into a long article. There's obviously too much text there to show you, but if you want to read it, it's on Medium, if you want to read that. And I, once I did this, I then shared it to Facebook. So straight away, create the article, shared it to Facebook, so there's two things covered straight away. I even tacked in my guy's little graph there, the one I showed you earlier. So this guy went on holiday, ate loads of food, dropped off. So there's a bit more social proof about my methods. Okay, I'm just gonna, because I haven't given anyone any questions. Anybody got any questions just yet about stuff I do? Good, okay. Not, not good, you should all have questions. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I repurposed the Instagram article using that as a framework into this longer article here and incorporate some other stuff. And then I put it into a video. Now, I don't think this will play, will it, on, uh, on here? Yeah, it won't be sound, so there's no point play, even playing it. So I basically made it into a video, and this, and this eventually became a Facebook ad I did. So all the concept there, three to six meals, got my whiteboard out, because I've, I've found that people like my whiteboard videos quite a lot. Made a three to six meal um, comparison there with calories, and then, yeah, uh, you can't hear the sound. What I did to capture the imagination was that when it comes off flat there, there was like a splat sound. So if you're watching it, it goes <laughs> So people get like, oh, what's that happening there? Um, I didn't subtitle this one because I just wanted to get it out faster. But anyway, the, the video explains everything. It's about a minute long food, a bit of a long video. Oops, good. So then this video was an organic video. It actually got quite a decent amount of uh, likes and shares and stuff like that. So I thought, well, actually, let's put some money behind it then. And although I'm not big budgeting like, um, like a lot of people can do, I just wanted to create an audience for Lead Magnet later on. So I made some copy up there. There's obviously a bit more copy than what it says there. Made the video into it. Um, it got, whatever, liked by 136 people. So that's good. I think if an advert gets a like, that's, that's a bit better than just your mates doing it. Um, some comments, 43 shares, which was quite nice to see that. And as of time of creating the presentation, which was last night, 62,000 views. That's not too bad. And here's the metrics there, which Stephen's going to just analyze in a minute and tell me it's shit. And, um, and the spend, I think, is somewhere there as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so 172 quid. It's been running for about a month, a month or so. Um, it, it was originally at £5 a day. I put up to like £10 a day when I was doing Target Lean. And then I dropped it back down to £5 a day. But it just keeps, still keeps generating interest. People still watch it and they still comment. I had a retard comment on it yesterday about something about keto or something. But How long was your time? It's, uh, I think it's uh, 90 seconds. So if you look at the, just to give you some ideas on like really quick analyzing of success of a video, Tom spent 172 quid, 90 seconds long. I can't. 50% views, almost 12,000, is that right? Yeah, so 50%, 11,843, 100%, 5,036. So divide, well, they, yeah, even 100%, divide 100% video views by his 172 pounds 43 in a month, he's had 100% video views for not a lot of money, right? So there's an easy metric for them to go, actually, this is successful, because with almost two, less than 200 quid, I had over 5,000 people watch a 90 second video from start to finish. Those people are obviously interested in what he's got to say. To spend 90 seconds sat on Facebook watching a video when they could be stalking the ex-girlfriend or whatever else, <laughs> other people do on Facebook. They've spent 90 seconds watching Tom's video. So that's an easy way of him going, yeah, that's a successful video for him, right? Yeah, so I was quite pleased with that. That was, um, uh, it says lifetime of a year. That's not correct because this was part of another, um, it wasn't 2018. It was actually just like, th this was part of another ad, I think. So that's, that's wrong. Um, so yeah, this um, this done quite well. I was quite pleased with it. I had a, f a lot of people commenting that they thought m little meals were better, which is great because then I can go on, engage with them, and give more education. And then my post goes up the rankings with more engagement, and people like the replies I put in. So this was a, a, a long reply to this woman saying it's not a good choice at all. I was like, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> it is a good choice. And she came back a few times going, oh, I think she, she referred to Dr. McCola at one point, and then Jason Fung, who's an absolute quack doctor, and I just said, That's, he's on the quack list, so there's no argument there. So and then she didn't reply after that. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's still running now. It's still getting likes, it's still getting engagement, and it's still building my audience. <clears throat> and I've retargeted these people into my lead magnet. 
Okay, so multi-purposing video, quick one, easy one. I make all my videos in wide format for YouTube, so on my phone. Then what I do is I, I run it through Video Leap, because it goes onto my photos, open Video Leap again, put the wide screen into it, cre create the canvas for a square, so you get the black marks there, put the text in, repurpose it onto your, onto your photos, that's two videos, and then take that square video, chuck it into a nine by three or whatever it is, um, tall IGTV version, download my Lee Body Blueprint, little stuff at the top there, and then sometimes I have little stuff that comes up at the end there saying download my uh, lead magnet, whatever. But basically, once I've created the video, it takes two minutes to repurpose it to three video formats, and then I would push this out. So YouTube would, would probably go at the same time as Instagram. The, in, the Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I'd probably do over a couple of different days so that people see the comment in different areas. And then the IGTV, I generally post IGTV on Fridays as like a sort of a Friday movie thing with a bit of copy into it. And does everybody know that if you have IGTV, you can actually post a link, you don't have to have the swipe up function, you can, you can have a link to your website, whatever it is, in the comments. So you don't need to, yeah, so it's, I only found out the other day, mint, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so, that, so all my IGTV stuff now has a link to my website or whatever else. Okay, so once you've done all that content, what else can you do? you can make a mini book. And I know Sook's done mini books. It's a, I think it's a Simon Sinek started it or whatever, but really powerful. I know Sook's had some really good, um, uh, really good engagement with his stuff. So I took the big or small meals, which is better for a diet as a front sheet. Then I just created all these different sort of bullet points. This is all done on Spark Post. So you'd have to swipe on Instagram for it. So that, that was the whole book there, and, and obviously the answer at the end there. So people could swipe through, use a similar type of copy, but you're just repurposing the same thing again and again. And then I'd take that and chuck it into a PDF. So now I've got actual lead magnet. Do you want to know about three to six meals? Is, is, is um, more meals better or less meals better? Download my free book, here's the link. So here's where all that stuff went. So it started off with Twitter, then went to Instagram, Facebook, I did it on LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn's a slow burner for me. Medium for articles. Um, I then emailed them. I, I actually created an email about three to six meals and then a couple of days later, or I think a week later, I said, oh, I've done this article. If you want to read it, it's a further development. YouTube, I don't do a lot of YouTube, but I still post stuff there. IGTV, and then PDF, you can create like a lead magnet for it. So all that stuff, in, it probably took me about an hour to do all that stuff if I combined all the time I spent doing it. And that's just one post. Now, what about bunching stuff together? So on this list, there were things that related to each other. So you can build then into, into if you want to look at doing an ebook or something, something with a bit more depth to it, all these yellow ones, they were similar types of content. So I looked at them and thought, oh, that, that, you know, that could be part of my like, system or process or something. So, I, this is my five mistakes, and if you, if you follow me on Instagram, you see I always talk about the five mistakes. The five mistakes people make when they're trying to diet. Don't make these mistakes, and you'll, and you'll lose weight really easily. Follow my system, it eliminates the five mistakes. So you've got over-restriction of calories, elimination of food groups, portion, size, compensating eating, and not planning to fail. So these were all Instagram tiles, which I did um, consecutive days. Videos, I repurposed all, so I did a video for each one, which is a minute long, and then repurposed them all there. And then I made it into my uh, Lean Body Blueprint, which is my grand touch point for my business. So this is what I send all my weight loss clients to do first. You wanna work with me? Go and read this first. So they get that content building. So when you say it's 6.50 to work with me for eight weeks, they go, well, okay, because I've read all that and I'm, I'm bought into your stuff. This PDF here took me a little while. I did it on Word and then put it into PDF. Here, I've got the videos and they're, they're linked in on a PDF there. So I've got different types of content going in onto a PDF. So they can read the PDF, click the button, and I digest endless amounts of my content. And then a bit of testimonials there and stuff like that. And this has done quite well. I've had about 2,000 downloads from it. Sadly, not 2,000 customers, but you know, you can't win all the time. Um, but people have actually lost weight using the Body Blueprint. And they've mailed me saying, I used your thing, I've lost weight. I'm like, 
But yeah, they, um, yeah, they've lost weight. And then they tell their mates about it. And actually, people who've lost weight using the free one, they've given it to their mates, and then their mates have come and worked with me. So that's not bad at all. So this, if you can get results on this, but without doing anything, people will tell their friends, go and read that. So how I break that down, so it's like a mini brochure, a sales book for your business. And you can do this for any, 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 any um, industry you work in. So here I have a little welcome thing, what I do. And when I was, when I was giving my pitch at the beginning, I was telling you what I do and who I work with and everything else. That's just on there, but it's more documented. So you build authority. So why, why, why do I know what I'm doing? You know, what have I done? The identify the problem. And this says, um, you deserve to have the body you want without suffering. Because we do, don't we? We don't want to suffer for what we, what we want. There's a solution. And then here's a bit of the method I use. So that's the overview. Then the five key mistakes. Why are they mistakes? What's the solution? So this incorporates that, that Excel spreadsheet that we did earlier. And here's like little take home points there. And then I had a summary of how to do the system. So do these steps. And I created my own calorie system, acronym calorie. That's fucking awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and no one steal this. It's on the trademark. Well, it will be trademarked soon. So calculate your calories for weight loss. Allocate the calories into blocks. List the foods you like to eat. Organize those foods into meals. Routine and habit building. Increase activity. Evaluate progress and adjust to improve. That's my calorie system. And that is built from all that stuff, literally from, the, from that spreadsheet I did, I, I put into that, eventually got it into this. And this is in my actual brochure for Target Lean. So from that one spreadsheet, I've got this massive ebook and all this content. So if you think outside the box a little bit, rather than just yogurt infographics, you can get a lot more out of it. Hey, I, I like yogurts, mate. I, I do like it. Um, and then once you've, once you've done that, you can say, right, well, they've digested certain amount of your media, they've had a few of your touch points, how can they have more of you? So challenges I do, um, free stuff, here's all my social media things if they want to follow me. So if they've downloaded this ebook, they're probably likely going to follow you on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. Get more of my stuff by following my videos and then email, podcasts, etc. So this gives them all the, all the ways they can, they, can talk, they can find you. You don't have to advertise to them, you don't have to tell them where to go because they can get it all from here. And then I shove some um, testimonials here. And this is a, a, just an overview of the Target Lean um, program. I don't tell people to join Target Lean now, buy now, um, although probably, probably say I should do that. But um, I, this is more like a, if you want to know more, click the link, because they're going to get six emails backing up this Lean, Lean Body Blueprint. So every day after they've downloaded this, they'll get a, did you read this thing? Here's a case study about a client. Here's, here's someone I work with who lost weight while on holiday. I've been in that situation. And this is basically the Mike Samuels um, uh, sequence. It's, I think it's on the, on the OFB course. Yeah, so I adjusted it for what I wanted to do. But if you go there, that's the email sequence. Six emails built into a sale at the end. But I've said they're coaching emails to help you. So people buy it, we'll get six coaching emails as well. So there, there's the uh, testimonials back at what I do. And then this is my super testimonial here. And Hazel was someone who had real problems with eating disorders. And for, for years, since she was 13, had an issue with eating disorders. I worked with her and she transformed her body and now she is my biggest proponent of, of, uh, of uh, my, my work. So she refers loads of people to me. But that's a really nice story for people to get behind, you know, because I think a lot of women have had that issue where they've, um, they've not been able to lose weight and done really hard diets. Okay, so key things to remember for your content, coming to the end of it, I know they're probably all ready to go to sleep now. So key things to remember for your content. So a consistent message, sorry this is in black, it was um, in white, it's not translated over properly on the, um, on the keynote. So consistent message, so always speak to your audience. Become known for one or two things, so that's your rant, what, what do you stand for? Don't consistently slate other businesses by name. I know we all like to have a pop at Slimming World and, and stuff like that, but if you're always saying oh, what, what idiots Slimming World are, you'll get known for being the guy who always slates Slimming World, not the guy who does Target Lean or does whatever program you do. You'll be the guy who's always, always going on about Slimming World. Publishing original content gives you authority. So everybody does yogurt memes, or they do like comparison memes. If you publish an original article with new ideas, which people go, oh yeah, I get that. That's a light bulb moment for me. They'll engage with you better. 
gives you authority to talk about who you are and why, you, why they should be listening to you. Um, call people to action, make it easy for them to take action. So every post I do has a now what do you do thing. So it's not always going by target lean. Sometimes it's, you know, you, you can download my blueprint, you can download the calorie calculator, you know, watch this other video I've done, something like that. Keeping them in your environment, in your ecosystem. Now remember that most people won't see your content because obviously Instagram algorithm doesn't show everybody on your friends list your stuff. So if you repurpose it and repost it every six months, you're probably going to reach people who haven't seen it before. So that's fine to do as well. And once you start doing this content, if you keep it all in a folder on your computer or whatever, you'll be able to just dig it out every three or four months and go, well, I'll put that on and again, maybe re-edit it for, say, uh, new current affairs or whatever. So then you, you can still keep purposing the message out. And so if you've got a really good video, which did really well, you can send it out again and say, oh, I remember this, throwback Thursday or whatever. Okay, so managed to get through 56 slides in 47 minutes, get in. So any questions about that? Now, I won't answer questions on the Facebook ads because that's the guy there to talk to about that. Um, anything about what I do and, and the way I create content? Yeah? Yeah, so I, I will do, because um, I have childcare commitments, so Fridays I have uh, Jacob in the afternoon and I have clients in the morning, so I, don't do, I, I do all my stuff, say, Wednesday or Thursday when I've got a few hours. So what I'll do is I'll do the spreadsheet, um, say, on Sunday, just put some new ideas in, and then I'll create the content on the next couple of days if I've got, like, a few minutes free or whatever. And then I'll think, right, well, I'll post it. Um, I'm sort of okay at using the content twister. I, I'm not great at organisation, so I'll have, normally have a folder on my phone or in my iCloud, and I'll say, right, this stuff to post this week, and then I'll just chuck it out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I, I haven't got a specific plan, like Monday I'm going to post that, Tuesday I'm going to post that. Um, the only um, time I would do that is if I've got like a launch coming up or something, I've got an actual sequence. Uh, and I don't use Buffer or things, because I found that was just taking up more of my time to actually put all that in and reprogram it and, and set it out for scheduling. I'll just do all my content and go, right, oh, that's what I'm going to do in this week, so I'll just send it out. Um, I've not found that specific days with specific content makes so much difference. So I'll just get it done and then post out on a certain time of the day when I've got time. Any other questions? Yeah. Any guidelines on uh, what posting content on nutrition um, for people, obviously, haven't got nutrition um, qualifications? Now that's a tricky one because if you post the wrong stuff, you'll get the evidence-based crowd flying onto your messages, you know, with all the GIMP stuff and everything else, which looks ridiculous. Um, so the, um, I think if you're going to do a nutrition thing, maybe if you have a guy you work with for nutrition, if you're not programming nutrition yourself, so for me, I don't do, uh, I don't do PT anymore. So I have a person I refer to, if a client wants PT, and I'll say, you see this person, I'll do your nutrition, they do the PT. And I rarely post on training stuff, unless it's stuff to do with bodybuilding, which I've done yeah. to death. So I know how to do a bicep curl, so I don't need someone to tell me. So I stay in my lane massively. And if, if you're an expert on something, so I'm an expert on nutrition and helping people lose weight, that's where I stay, because that's the people I want to attract. So if you're not going to program for nutrition, I wouldn't bother. I mean, you might want to share stuff, which someone you know has, who to be reputable has put out, and you go, this is quite good, but always relate it back into your business. Don't just share it, go, oh, really good post from someone, although you're all welcome to share my post saying it's really good stuff to someone. But relate to how it comes back to your business. You know, this is great because a few of my clients think they need to eat whatever on holiday, but you don't have to. So it relates back to your business. You have clients and everything else. So, yeah, I wouldn't post stuff that you're not comfortable with discussing people, discussing people in detail. Yeah. Yeah, so my niche market is that I specifically work with people who want to lose 20 kilos or more. How often do you mention that in your content? All the time now. It's, uh, I've, only, I've only recently got into the niche thing and I've had a rethink of the way I'm doing business because I used to do one-to-one one -one stuff a lot, and, but selling time for money is, is, is a very limiting thing. If you want to scale properly, you can only work with a certain amount of one-to-ones, can't you? And if you've got to scale business out, you need to be able to do that well 
en masse, don't you? So, so I, I'm coming away from doing one-to-one -one stuff, only work with a couple, say five to ten one-to-ones, and the rest is going to be target lean on my membership site that's coming up. So I'll, that'll be generally, I'll tell you how to lose weight, here's all the tools. Same as how OFB is for your, um, for, for your business. You know, Sook does, he works with some people, but there's so many people on the OFB course, and that's the scale thing, and that's what I'm going to be doing for nutrition. So I, I don't, I, I've only recently started going into the niche market, but it will be 20 kilos or more that they want to lose. Now there's loads of people that want to lose 20 kilos of weight or more, and I've worked with so many of those types of clients that I know exactly the things that affect them and the things that are on their mind. Now, I still get people who don't want to lose 20 kilos saying, oh, can you help me with the holiday and everything else? I mean, that's fine. If I want to work with that person, I'll go, yeah, okay, you're a decent person, but if they're idiots, I can just say, oh, you know, I don't think we're a good fit because I only work with people 20 kilos or more. But if you, an analogy here is like, if you want to get divorced, right, do you go to a lawyer and go, I want to get divorced, can you, uh, can you, can you help me? And they go, well, I've done some, I've done some divorce, yeah, I've done some criminal stuff as well, and yeah, yeah, I could probably do that for you. Or do you go to the ruthless as fuck guy who's like, absolutely, I'll get you a divorce, and I'll get all the money off her, no problem at all, and you'll get the house. That's the guy you go to, isn't it? The guy who niches into doing exactly what you want. So there's people out there who, who, who want exactly what you want. So sell to them, tell them exactly what you do and how you can help them, and all these things, how you've helped similar people in the same situation, and you'll be oversubscribed. You don't have to, oh yeah, I do weight loss, I do PT, and you know, those people will come in anyway. And even if you set your, on that narrow focus, you'll still get people from the outskirts coming in saying, oh, could you help me? And then you can make a choice whether to help them or not.